Well, while there have been scenes of celebration in the United States, not everyone's rejoicing in the death of Osama bin Laden. There have been protests in Pakistan denouncing the killing, and some Muslim groups are upset that the body was disposed at sea. Now the White House is weighing up whether to risk further offence and release photos of the corpse and also provide a DNA test to prove, prove that once and for all that bin Laden is dead. This Pakistani man living in New York summed up the suspicions of some. You know, 100% of the peoples, they are not sure that he is dead. They want to see, see the body, you know. So they want to see the body, then they're sure that he is dead. Peter, they need to release the photos to stop... Conspiracy theories? Yeah, this is difficult. It's, uh, you know, win and lose either way. It's, that, um, it's prudent to not show the photos right away to kind of give that image that we're trying to respect the dead and so forth. But eventually, the public clamor for it, much like the birthers for Obama, mm -hmm. we want to see this, that's going to that's gonna keep coming till that comes out. Mm -hmm. Andy, what do you think? I think inevitably the photograph's going to get released only because uh, the conspiracy theories will suggest otherwise if it doesn't. But I mean, the broader question really is the idea that what is Bin Laden's legacy, so to speak? I mean, these are the bigger questions. I mean, in many ways, of course, he was an utter failure. He was a thug. He was a criminal, committed numerous terrorist acts. However, you could argue, I think, very convincingly that in the last 10 years since 9-11, America has been fundamentally transformed because of that act on that one day. Far more militarised society, trillions of dollars spent on intelligence, arguably not doing a very good job, generally. A few exceptions, including the last couple of days, allegedly. But more importantly, exactly what exactly has happened to the Arab world since 9-11? And what's been fascinating in the last few months has been how what's happening in the Arab world now is happening despite America and despite Al-Qaeda. Egypt, Tunisia, Libya... Al-Qaeda's role was almost irrelevant. So on the one hand, bin Laden's legacy clearly is about saying that America wants to spend unbelievable amounts of money invading Muslim countries, as it's done, and increase that. On the other hand, as the Arab world is now changing, bin Laden and Al-Qaeda's message is obviously not as appealing anymore as it once was. Pete, what did you make of the cheering crowds in the US and how might that be fed back into Afghanistan, into Pakistan, yeah. into the Middle East? Seeing that picture, um, you could have thought that picture was somewhere in the Middle East of people cheering for the death of America or something except for change the flags in the location and it really did the celebration of a killing. Um, I think that uh, uh, it's in America this is closure in one sense. It's also ultimate victory. Um, for the past 10 years, we haven't really haven't had a victory. There have been hollow victories in Afghan and Afghanistan and Iraq where you know, we'd win, but not really. Two steps forward, two steps back. This is permanent, resounding, ultimate victory. There's no going back unless he's Lazarus. So I think that you know, in this sense, you see the jubilation from America. But the images, the effect it's going to have on the Arab world, it could mobilize uh, a response. It could, uh, too much celebration, could actually bring out more activists or terrorists. Dan Crow, what was your reaction to the, those cheering crowds in America? I've been interested in the fact that um, the Australian reaction is to recoil from that kind of scene where people are cheering over the death of somebody in that, in that intensely nationalistic way. Uh, but I feel some sympathy for those Americans who spontaneously uh, came out uh, around the White House um, on the night of Obama's statement because, after all, it was on their soil that the Twin Towers fell and that Flight 93 went down in a field. And I, I guess I, uh, I don't judge them too harshly uh, for, for cheering in the way they do because I, uh, I guess it's, it's their experience felt much more uh, sharply over there than here. That's for sure. Well, the death of Osama bin Laden has sparked fears of reprisals against Western nations. Foreign Minister Kevin Rudd, who's in the United States, has warned Australians to remain vigilant. It's critical that uh, this man, this murderer, was brought to justice. Uh, it's equally critical that we remain vigilant against uh, future terrorist attacks. And what we know from the past, that these are non-discriminating in terms of where they are launched, against whom they are launched. Muslims, Christians, anybody, in whatever centre in the world. So our forces have a challenge ahead of them. And there are concerns the killing could lead to fresh attacks closer to home. Former Jamaat Islamiyah commander Nasir Abbas has warned it could spur on those willing to commit jihad on Indonesian soil. We will be more angry about what happened to Osama bin Laden. Yeah, especially it was been attacked by American troops. Andy, what are the, uh, uh, are the risks of attacks from Indonesia? Because that piece that Matt Brown put together for Lateline last yeah. night, he talked about the fact that some of the bombers uh, will be getting out of jail soon. 
Indonesian public opinion in the last years has fundamentally showed that most Indonesians are totally opposed to what J.I. did, terrorism, killing civilians. That's true. Is it possible this could launch some other kind of um, conflict quite easily? You know, disgruntled people don't need much to cause chaos. I mean, the wider issue, I think, is which we've been touching on is that how resistance in the Arab and Muslim world is viewed now is very different to how it was 10 years ago. Groups like Hamas, Hezbollah, even Iran, in many people's minds, I'm not saying in my mind, in many people's minds, they are seen because they have social connections to communities in Palestine or in Iran or Lebanon. They actually have support in many areas and a lot of people see them as standing up as in ways that Al-Qaeda never did arguably far less brutally. I mean, those groups have committed terrorist acts as well, of course. But I guess my point is that al-Qaeda is sort of seen to be far less effective to represent many Muslims in the Arab world, and groups like that don't represent all Muslims, of course, but they speak for many people who still want to resist, in my view, justifiably ways of what's happened since 9-11 has clearly been increasing occupations of Muslim countries, which is what bin Laden said was going to maybe happen, which I think is why you could argue that that legacy of his, in fact, he would see as a victory rather than as a loss. Pete, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's, it's difficult. Um, I think within Indonesia, um, you know, the Obama, um, oh, bin Laden, bin Laden is much more now a symbolic leader than yes. he was a tactical leader. That, that The tactical element has been removed from him for some time. And his death is a devastating blow to, you know, the ego, the will, um, the image of those who would support him. He's no longer going to be tactically effective, or even if he was still alive. And I think with Indonesia, his death could motivate those people to strike out. Um, but uh, also, over time, once you lose your symbolic leader, you lose the will to fight. So there might be an initial surge, but I think over time this is a devastating loss.